Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 13 God's Not Guilty by Andrew Womack. Today I want to share one of the most important things God has ever done in my life. It seems people automatically believe everything that happens to them is from God, that He controls everything. The reason for this is that by definition, God is supreme and all-powerful, and they just assume He controls everything that happens in their lives. Even unbelievers believe it. There are many Christians who promote this doctrine, and it has become ingrained in their lives. I believe what Scripture teaches is contrary to this, and it is very important that you learn this lesson. James 1, verses 13 to 17 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. These verses make it very clear that God is the author of the good things. Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. That is very simple theology. The reason this is so critical is because James 4 verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This says, we have to submit or yield control to God and resist the devil. The word resist means to actively fight against. When people believe everything that happens in life is totally from God, for example, sickness, failure in business, losing a job, rebellious children, or divorce, that puts them in the position of being passive. If they really believe God is the author of a situation and is using it to punish them or change them, they would be fighting against him if they resist. Yet James 4 verse 7 says, To resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have to submit yourself to God. This shows that certain things are of God and certain things are of the devil. There is a force of evil in this world, and not everything that happens in your life comes from God. If you do not understand that, you will end up submitting to the devil and actually empowering Satan. I want to bring out a passage in Romans because it is misused so often. I have actually been to funerals where people don't know anything about God. They don't go to church and know hardly any scripture, but they know this one. Romans 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. This has been interpreted to say that whatever happens in your life, God does it and works it together for good in some way. I actually was at a funeral for a young boy and girl who had been mixing alcohol and drugs, got into a car, drove too fast on a slippery road, skidded round a corner 
hit a telephone pole and were both killed. The preacher quoted this scripture. We know all things work together for good and said God must have a purpose in doing this. God didn't kill those teenagers. And in a sense, you can't even say the devil did it. It was the teenagers. I'm sure the devil enticed them to rebel against the standards their parents and others had taught them, but ultimately it was their choice. They are the ones who did the dope and the alcohol. They are the ones that hit the telephone pole. That was a natural thing and God was not the source of it. What does it mean when it says, we know that all things work together for good? First of all, it didn't say, we know all things come from God and work together for good. It says all things work together for good, but puts qualifications on it, to them that love God. This scripture doesn't work for a person who doesn't love God. That is so obvious that it should go without saying, but it is amazing how people apply it towards instances like these young people who were doing drugs and alcohol and were in total rebellion against God and his principles. This says it only works together for good to those who love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. In 1 John 3 verse 8 it says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. God manifested himself to destroy Satan's work. That is his purpose, and it will only work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That is, those who are walking in this calling are resisting the devil and are out to destroy his works. Those who are resisting the devil and living for God can say that regardless of what the devil does in their lives, God can turn it around and use it for good. We need to start discerning that God does not control everything in our lives. There is an enemy that comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life. We have to choose life and willfully recognize that God is not guilty of everything that comes into our lives. If God was a physical human being who did the things he is accused of, such as putting cancer, deformities, depression, sorrow and grief on people, I guarantee there is not a government on earth that would not arrest, imprison or try to stop him. Yet we think God, who is much more merciful than any person we've met or imagined in our lives, is going around striking people and doing this. There are some things that are demonic attacks and some that are natural, and not all disasters are God-ordained. The insurance companies write in their policies acts of God, such as earthquakes and pestilence. No, God is not the author of all these things. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read James 1 verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. 
question. Does God cause men to be tempted by evil? Answer. No. We read James 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Question. Where do good gifts come from? Answer. The Father of lights. We read John 10 verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Question. Who is the thief? Answer. The devil. Question. What are his purposes? Answer. To steal, kill, and destroy. Question. What is the reason Jesus came? Answer. To give us life more abundantly. We read James 4 verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Question. What is the result of submitting yourself to God and resisting the devil? Answer. He will flee from me. We read Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Question. Does Romans 8 verse 28 say that all things are from God? Answer. No. We read Acts 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Question. Is sickness from God? Answer. No. We read 1 John 3 verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Question. What was the purpose that the Son of God was manifested? Answer. To destroy the works of the devil. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.